Okay, um, this is going to be my first test of doing a screen recording with sound. Um, so yeah, um, so recently I, on Sunday, I bought an Asus OnHub router um, that ties in with, like um, ties in with the Google Wi-Fi, and Walmart had it regular 180, but the tag on the box was from August. The tag on the shelf said 44.99 or something. It was pretty much $45, $49 after tax for this about $200 router. And um, since I got it so cheap, and since I enjoy uh, the hacking perspective of it, um, I decided to start at it. And started out with, um, now if I can think of where I'm going, crap. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna have to. Um, so started out with just kind of taking it apart and just kind of looking at the inside a little bit. And what I noticed um, was is that full res? Yeah. So um, at first I was just looking for a switch or button um, to enable the dev mode, and that turned out to be right there. Um, and so. Um, the OnHub routers, the TP-Link and the Asus, both actually run Chrome OS. Um, slim down build, like it's not running Chrome and everything else. But um, so the developer mode and stuff is a lot like the Chrome OS devices. So you long hold reset, plug it in, wait for which end is which, LED to turn blue, uh, the orange and then red. I don't know where. And um, it then, um, and then you hit Control D on the keyboard, and then pressing the button confirms Dev mode. Um, that got me in. Um, well, that got Dev mode enabled, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do with it yet. And um, so left it like that for a day. Um, came back at it and realized right there. Exposed header, three pins, how much you want to bet cereal. And yes, it turned out to be cereal. Um, and after a very crappy soldering job later, I had cereal connection, ground, RX, and um, TX, left to right. Um, yeah, because I realized you might not be able to see my mouse. Um, and so that got me into a shell. Uh, after it booted up, um, only only drops your shell after it hits Linux. There's no early boot message or anything, which would, which would be nice, because the only status you have of what it's doing pre-boot is a blinking LED. Yeah. Um, so the next step was to, um, and what helped a lot was a guy uh, was a guide that was already created for the TP-Link. Um, majority of the steps applied. Um, this booted into a USB image, so it had full access to modify everything. I was booted into one of the kernels and rootfs's, so I had to modify one, set it as default, reboot to it, modify the other. So slightly changed instructions, which I have posted. Um, they're pretty rough. But so that got me into, and so when you, and so to actually do that, um, the um, not only does it run Chrome OS, it actually runs Core Boot uh, as its actual bootloader. Um, the flash chip by default has write protection on it, both hardware and software. Hardware is a screw uh, bridging these two contacts. And when it's unscrewed, it it unbridges. And so you take off the hardware, you disable the software, and then like you can resign the bootloader. You could flash a new one if you wanted to. In the case of this, um, it just basically generates some keys and puts it into like a, like it's already in dev mode, but it kind of like signs it with dev keys too. Um, and so yeah, and so what that allows you to do 
is make it say thing. Um, I don't have actual computer audio routed, so like um, I use Google's Pico TTS to actually say things. Uh, music test, which is kind of seen how it sounded um, on the Disco Party, is where you can sh you can tell the LED to do things and um, UPnP media render which this is kind of why I started the video. Um, so I wanted a way to run more normal applications on it like I'm used to in Linux. Um, Chrome OS has a, there's there's a package manager called Chrome Brew that has like a command called crew, but the actual install for it, um, well, I shouldn't say needs wget, but the install script is tailored around wget, and wget is not on this base image, it, it's kind of stupid, but whatever, it works. Um, well, so I wasn't able to run the script, so I'm like, okay, aside from that, what else can I do? And then I realized, uh, oh, <laughs> shh, 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 baby is okay. Yes. Okay, there we go. Finish. And so what I realized is that I took my experience from the Steam Link uh, by Valve, um, which also runs Linux fairly open, a lot more open than this was actually. But oh, excuse me, um, I ran a crude on it with just a generic. Uh, Arch Linux ARM, ARM v7, RootFS. Um, I literally did the same instructions and stuff. I made it X4 because this supports X4. And word for word ran these commands. And I get... Uh, I set up a script to... Uh, root setup. So I set up a script that if I don't pass it anything it does all the mount correctly. And then if I pass it something, it just, it runs that on the crude. Um, but if I just want to crude in manually, I can just do crude mount USB and tell it what program I want to run, which in this case, a shell. And I'm in Arch Linux, running off of a USB 3 flash drive. Oh, I can update GCC. Why don't we do that? Whew. And while I'm here, do I have VNC viewer? Can, ah, I can show this. Sweet. Um, I'll just close that for now. Listen, no, I've got it. Um, so after this updates, one's fairly okay. Um, this is running on a kind of dedicated Qualcomm Wi-Fi oriented um, system on chip, so it's doing what it can. Like it's a dual core crate, 1.4 gigahertz, uh, one gigabyte of RAM. Um, although a couple places, even the Asus website says it says four gigabytes. I don't know if there's a different dedicated section for something, but what's actually available to this system, um, not even just Arch Linux, just in the Chrome OS system in general, is is a gigabyte. Um, Make sure this hasn't frozen on me. No, okay, we're good. Um, so after this updates, I can continue to show. There we go. So, and then I run a sync just in case. There we go. All right. And so I realized that I can also create my own user account so I don't have to live in root because that's not something you should do or want to do. Um, is that um, with root, so actually, you do want to use root for some stuff, but um, this has access to the also hardware on the device itself, um, playing through like a little tiny three watt speaker, like it's nothing amazing. Um, so I was able, oh, that's not even going to show it because I just used, I just installed it from R. So I use what's available in the system, uh, installed Packer, and installed G Media Render Resurrect, and Oh, this isn't going to uh, tab complete because I don't have bash completion installed yet. 
uh, which that's usually the first thing I do because that drives me batshit crazy. And so basically I can, it serves as a UPnP renderer, so now I can send audio to it um, from my computer uh, with Pulse Audio DNLA or from my phone with Bubble UPnP. Um, and so this just really opens up what you're able to do with the system because this is running from the flash drive on the router all while the all while the router is my main connection. Um, and what this also allows me to do is VNC server. All right, so that started VNC. Uh, display one. Oh, if I can type right. Display one, XFCE four session. And if I now launch VNC viewer, uh, 192.168.86.1. Uh oh, oh, port, yeah. VNC viewer, 5901. There we go, password. And there we go. Uh, there's a couple errors I haven't quite nailed, haven't quite ironed out everything. But yeah, now I'm running XFCE4 from a flash drive on my Google router, all while it's being my internet. Um, let's browse the internet on the internet. Uh, sudo hyphen hyphen s chromium. It's not too bad. 129 megabytes, sheesh. And just to make sure, this is still recording, right? Yes, okay, good. I, I would hate myself if I've been talking all this time with nothing. Um, doop, 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 doop. It is, um... I started out running this from a 2.0 drive, and I got a freeze that like completely like corrupted a bunch of files just on this rootfs, and so I switched to the 3.0. It's been good. I just and so every time it slightly pauses, I'm like I'm like I'm worried it's crapped. Like I'm worried it's crapped itself again, but it's good because when I was on the 2.0 drive, the router seemed to reboot itself and just randomly. Like I don't think it ran out of memory or anything. It just I'm going to reboot. Like it didn't, like it didn't even update or anything. All right, there we go. Sync just in case. And now we can run actual Chromium on a Chrome OS. Okay, that doesn't work. Never mind. It does not like to do that. Dev SHM. Yeah. Ooh. Well, uh, let's see if this works. Let's see if I don't break everything. That's probably not the cause of it, but. And clipboard sync works. Nice. Let's try that again. Chromium. Oh, oh, we're getting something. Yes. Nice. All right. <laughs> it works. After a bit of hacking. Well, not hacking, but modifications. Um, uh oh, <laughs> something went wrong. We'll just play. Well, let's see if I can just go to Google. Play straight up Google. Can you render? Yeah. Let's see if I can go to the exploiteer page. Ex exploiteers. <laughs> if I just like completely don't miss. Exploiteers. There we go. I still managed to backspace over an extra character. There we go. Well, can I give up yet? There we are. Oh, dot RS. God damn it. Okay. And because I hate this panel. Because I never use you. Panel preferences. I'm probably... <laughs> I just realized I'm running Chromium 
with everything else on one gigabyte of RAM. This, this isn't good. This isn't good at all. Actually, let's see. Um, open tab. Free hyphen M. Yeah, I think it's running itself out of memory. Yep, and there's bunch and buffers and cache. Yeah, so yeah, that's not like an it cancel because Chromium's running into one. But let's see if it'll load without shitting itself. There we go. Browsing the internet oh, on my internet. Okay, let's just exit out of that. Um, I can. I can hear it crying. And exit. Kill XFCE. And kill VNC. VNC server. Hyphen kill one. And there you go. Alright, so we're out of that. But yeah. Um, so. Um, as long as anything like. I can use any application that interfaces with ALSA, which is most of them. Um, I would prefer Pulse Audio to work, in all honesty. But um, it doesn't find the sound card no matter what I try. Um, like, it'll run. Like, it'll launch with dummy output. So there's probably, like, a way I can finagle it to get it to do stuff. But... Um, and so, yeah. Um... That's about it. Um, it's it's a great little device. Um, if I'd pay more than a, if I had paid more than a hundred dollars for it, I probably wouldn't have uh, taken it apart and um, went after it so fast. But <laughs> um, for forty five bucks, I'm like, hey, even if this goes wrong, I've still got my old router, and it'll be fun. And it is still fun. It's fun and working, which that's really the best in all honesty. Um, so that's about it. Goodbye.